Hey everyone, Sages here, and welcome back to another episode of 999, after another absence for about a week or so, or multiple weeks. I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> we're back and now we're in the kitchen because I am really hungry and I'm hoping Lotus can make me a sandwich. But, uh, first off and foremost, there are quite a few plates in front of us, so let's take a look at them, shall we? And I'll be going over the uh, trivia question I asked last episode in a brief bit, and several of you went over it, but uh, apparently these plates are for seafood. 99 cent store. Really? Wow, thanks, Lotus. Lady doth protest too much, she thinks. Okay, great, thanks. Thanks, Lotus. Helpful. Ooh. Serving meat. Wow. Jesus Christ, Lotus. What the hell is wrong with you? Ten of these plates. Flip them over. They look like hats. Probably soup. Soup, uh, dishes. If they're deep like that. Ah, oh, they're soup plates, like I thought. Well, thank you, Lotus. Will you be treating me? Yeah, poor college kid. Come on. All right, next. Okay, pretty expensive. Oh, they're placed for advertising. All right, well then. I don't think they usually cut. I don't know. This seems like it. Okay, well, excuse me, princess. Wonderful. Oh, I didn't want the serving table, but you know what? That works too. Well, these are where the waiters and waitresses. Yada, yada, yada. Thanks, Lotus, for proving to me how expensive shit is, or at least how expensive you are to take on a date. That's a good question. Why are there? But there's a little pamphlet here. Let's see here. Ooh. Da, 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 da. Okay, it says appetizers 9, 10, Soup A, seafood dish F. What? And the plates on the table are nine appetizer, ten meat, I mean, eleven meat, ten soup, fifteen seafood. They're using, maybe they're using hexadecimal here? I uh, don't know what, yeah. Oh, it's a number system that goes eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. That's not base ten. Base ten is the normal counting system, right? Oh, well, okay, you're gonna explain it anyways. That's the normal system of numbers. Base 10 equivalent for hexadecimal numbers would go like this. A, 10, B equals 11, C equals 12, D equals 13, E equals 14, F equals 15. And 10 equals 16. Because, you know, that's great. I'm pretty sure a lot of old games actually used to use hexadecimal. In fact, some of them probably still do. Uh, it's an old coding system. And it's weird that she would know this, but okay. Kind of hints at her past in some ways, I guess, and that she knows how some of these things. Anyways, last episode I asked you guys about the Priestess Amun-Ra and if she actually existed or if she was actually in the Titanic. And I'm just gonna come right out and say, hey, look, cheese. Mmm. Let's see what's behind the cheese. All right, cheese. Mmm, cheese. Isn't it delicious, friends? Anyways, I'm just gonna snatch this bottle of olive oil. At least I think it's oil, or just oil in general. Or else I'm gonna go look over here, but before we go on, uh, I just wanted to give you the answer. No! She was never on the Titanic. However, there was a priestess that I'm guessing Amun-Ra in this story was based on. And she's currently located somewhere in the British Museum. And she was, from my understanding, there was going to be some way that she was going to be transported over to another museum, but it probably was not going to be the Titanic. And I don't think I would want to be on the Titanic anyways because of a mummy's curse. Not like that helped it at all, though. Whole Titanic, you know, iceberg thing. Anyways, here's a knife. We're going to use it to kill uh, Lotus, I'm sure. I really hope we use it to kill Lotus. Wow, okay, that's weird. Futile, what about it? Yes, I know what futile means. Do 
do you, do you just typically think about futility? No, seriously, what is wrong with you? Yes, why are you thinking about futility? Uh... Oh. Okay? Alright, what, what about it? Oh yeah, I've heard tons of stories about that, but for those who don't know, we're gonna go over it anyways, because there's an option to. It's, a, it's kind of important to the story anyway, so let's take a look, shall we? In 1892, 14 years before the Titanic sank, a novel was published. It was called Futility, and it was written by an American novelist named Morgan Robertson. The story was about a big cruise ship colliding with an iceberg and sinking. Hmm, that seems familiar. I'm not sure where, though. Of course, it was- <laughs> if that was the only similarity, it wouldn't be that- it'd be any reason to mention it. It wasn't, though. The name of the ship, its nationality, course, departure time, size, displacement, maximum speed, number of passengers and crew, the number of lifeboats, even the location of the accident itself, and the cause, and the location of the damage. Everything matches the Titanic almost exactly. It was almost as if you'd seen the th whole thing happen. But this book was written 14 years before the Titanic sank. But that's not all. It wasn't just futility that predicted the sinking of the Titanic. There were two other similar stories written by a man named William Thomas Stead. I think that's Stead. Uh, both, of the, both of them before the accident. One in 1886 and one in 1892. Okay. Stead wrote two stories that had sinking, uh, striking similarities. Sinking similarities would work just as well uh, to the Titanic disaster. In one, two ships collided and many of the passengers died because there weren't enough lifeboats, which is one of the problems that happened with the Titanic when you ba you know make a giant cruise liner. All the rich people get on it and all the poor have to suffer. Um, in other words, a ship collided with the iceberg and the sank. Oh, and the other one. That was... Ah, not other words, but, you know. I'm pretty sure it wasn't too uncommon for ships to hit icebergs back in the- I don't know about that one. Someone will have to look it up. I mean, I don't think there's very many casualties due to iceberg sinkings, aside from the Titanic, but I could be wrong. But then again, whole lifeboat situation. Some sort of special powers? To do automatic writing. Yes, I've seen that on many of the Discovery Channel's, you know, uh, ghost special things. Or it was it sci-fi? I don't know. But, uh, all I have to say is that don't ever watch any of those. <laughs> uh, what do you mean, yes, there's stuff's a load of bull? Well, I bl Wait, that's a good point. I believe in curses, but not... Okay, well. Well. Okay, well, so if I'm like, uh, uh, I don't, who the hell possessed him to write stuff like that? I don't know. Okay, well, then explain it, June. Uh-huh. He was doing, what? Yeah, what are you smoking? Twenty years before it, what? You're crazy. Please stop it. Please stop, June. Yeah, let's just continue on, shall we? Let's yeah, just pat you on the shoulder and I'm gonna go now. Thank you very much. Oh, and I'm gonna pick up this knife too before we leave. Alright, time to leave. Now that we have our knife, and our murder weapon, we will do, do, we will be the murderer in the kitchen with the knife, because Lotus is a bitch. But now, um, let's, let's take a look at some really awkward scenes. Might be able to use the, oh, okay. Old Hag's face might help moisturize a little, get rid of some of those wrinkles. Wow, she's gonna be pissed. Oh, that's a better suggestion. I like you now, Lotus. That won't last long, though, I'm sure. 
But uh, now that we have a rusted knife, there's actually two scenes or three scenes that can play out a little bit differently based on what you do here. So we're gonna we're gonna go with the more funny one. Okay. All right, thanks. I didn't mean to click the partition. Uh, here's a sink. Here's some. Yes, thank you. Okay, let's keep looking at. Oh, jeez. Okay, that doesn't play out as well as I thought it would. Anyways, this is a whetstone. For those who don't know, it's used to sharpen knives. Whoa. So let's just figure this one out. Oh, good. We'll be able to cut things with it now. Isn't that helpful? Very helpful. And another scene over here, I think, if I recall. Yes, there it is. Wow, Lotus, wow. <laughs> Just don't do favors for her, Santa, okay? Excuse me? Seriously? What are we, in the 80s? And it did feel colder in here, we have a new ice queen. Oh look, there's lights. But I like lights. This uh, lights to light up the room. They're doing a good job. Yeah, you're kind of special in your own way, Junpei. We're gonna ignore the rest of these things. There's a few doors and stuff, but mostly none of it is all that helpful. But here's something we need to look at. It's really rusty. Was it even open? I don't know. Let's try it, shall we? It's not like we haven't opened up tons of doors that can't, you know, tried to open up doors that can't be open. No dice. Oh, of course. That's great. But we happen to have a lubricant. <laughs> lubricant. And this oil here. Ah. Well, there we go. Look at that. Well, thank you, June. At least someone appreciates my abilities. Let's just go in here, damn it. I'm pretty sure this is Santa's home. Just look at it. It's a winter wonderland. Winter wonderland on the boat to hell. Anyways. What is this place? I don't know. What does it look like? Oh, good. Everyone's getting cold. Oh, yeah, she doesn't... Lotus is in probably in the worst situation ever because she has no clothes. Oh, okay. Bye, Lotus. Oh, okay. Nice of you. Just... Yeah. Great. Bye. <laughs> okay, you're fine. Our wait. Just had a fever a second ago. Now no fever. What kind of fever does? Ah, I don't know. Anyway, what? Just like this. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, great, it's closed. I think that's not doing too well. Oh, great, merely touching it was painful? Oh, no. Are we trapped in here? Looks like it. Looks goddamn like it. Wonderful. Is gonna help us or not? Ugh, fine. Really, woman, we're we're gonna die. We're gonna die in here, and you're just like, ugh. Why do I have to help you? Well, she's trying really hard. That or she really has to take a poop.
Oh, looks like we're screwed. So, uh... I hope you enjoy the cold. Newborn deer, really? Oh, okay. I think Santa probably has it worse because he actually has no sleeves nor nor anything to cover him. June kind of has a few things. Permanent residence. Okay. Okay, let's take a look around the room, you know, another escape. So this is actually an escape room inside an escape room. I hope you guys enjoyed that fact. One thing that I enjoy about this game as opposed to a game that I've never played before, totally not something that is on my channel right now and totally not related to this, um, is that the puzzle segments have story written into them, as opposed to the other one where they're just kind of there. It's in between the visual novel, and this one's just kind of the mixture of both. And look, we found a bit of meat. Oh, great. Wonderful. Well, obviously. Thanks for that, Santa. Let's just... And there's a little bit of a pantry door, or I guess something down here. But what we're looking for is here. There's a rope. Woohoo. Wow, thanks. How about this? It's a water bottle. Yes, it is. Thanks. And I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, let's leave, please. There we go. And next up over here is a piece of chicken. It's really hard. It's frozen stiff. Dune, can you say that again? What? <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Maybe we can use it to break something, who knows? But right now, what we're looking for is over here. But first, before we do that, let's look at the knife. Hey, look at, look, this! Ta-da! The knife! Oh, God. I, yeah, yeah, definitely did. Don't worry, it's just a knife. Okay, well, we have dry ice. Yes, cause an explosion. We're going, in case you couldn't tell where we're going with this, we're going to be making a dry ice bomb. Mmm, wonderful. Ah, well, that's great. I'm happy about that. Now we know about dry ice and expanding gases and how we can use it to make an explosive. Explosive. <laughs> Frozen carbon dioxide, yes. Something that doesn't ever have a liquid form, at least, for the most part. Hmm. Maybe. Wow, do you just happen to know this, June? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the clean? Clean? Clean. The queen. Or queen of random knowledge. Thanks, June. Helpful. Uh, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Yif. That's white. Okay, I don't think you're actually, yeah. You're doing that on purpose, aren't you? And she just giggles to herself, of course. Good question, why doesn't it turn into a liquid? June, do you happen to know this? We want to actually hear a bit more about it. Mm. 
Oh, so high enough pressure. But at one atmosphere, normal air pressure. Oh, it won't turn into a liquid. Ah, sublimation and things like that. So it immediately goes from a solid state to a gaseous state. That's that's pretty handy, especially when you put it in a water bottle, just so we're clear. What? You you heard about such a thing? Of course you did. You you seem to know a lot. The melting point is 96 degrees. What? Oh, wonderful. That's kind of crazy. But it's too interesting to ignore as we freeze to death. And we're talking about a supposed ice that doesn't melt below 96 degrees. Ugh. Ice 9. Hmm. by a science fiction author. But recently, scientists have discovered such a substance actually exists, and we'll be getting into this a bit later. It'll actually be something of a trivia question at the end of the episode, but I want you guys to be ready for it. So this thing called Ice-9, or is it water? Ah, uh, it's ice. <laughs> if the ice is over, oh, 96 degrees, it'll be liquid. If it's under, it'll solidify, oh great. Polymorph of H2O. Oh my god, diamonds and graphite, we're really gonna go into this? They're both made of carbon, but depending on the structure and crystallization and the hardness, the hardness of str and the structure are completely different, so it's normal water and there's nice nine like that. Okay, well that's great. Of oh, glycerin? Uh, no? For 150 years after the discovery of glycerin, people cooled it, warmed it, and did all sorts of things to it. But for whatever reason, I, I added for whatever reason, but whatever they did, it never crystallized. I'm paraphrasing. However, one day in 1920, some glycerin was en route to England, en route to England, of course, by ship and discovered to have crystallized during trip, I guess? Ah, uh, naturally scientists worldwide wanted to research this new crystallized form of glycerin and began asking for samples of the seed. A seed, of course, is a sample of crystal- uh, a sample of the original crystallized- crystallized substance. Blah, 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 I cannot talk today. With a seed crystal, further crystallization of glycerin would be a simple matter. However, something very strange happened. Not only did the glycerin encur uh, encouraged by the seed crystal begin to crystallize nearby samples, did as well. Okay. It didn't end there, and I dropped my style as fuck. After the day, all glycerin in the world began to crystallize normally when cooled to less than 64 degrees. Before this day, no matter how glycerin was cooled, it refused to crystallize. But once the crystallization had begun, it was almost like, how do I put it? It was almost like glycerin in the, all the glycerin in the world was communicating. Communicating in some way that we cannot sense, or can't sense. I'm gonna find my stylus real quick. <laughs> Found it. Yeah, we'll be honestly impressed. It was actually, it's actually a pretty interesting story. Think about it. Things that communicate, but we can't sense it or see it. Unless, of course, they're like talking to each other while we're not looking. Like, yo, bro, let's freeze. Put them all on ice. Oh god, that's. <laughs> I feel bad for making that stupid ass joke. Never mind. Yes, that would be bad if Ice Nine did that. If Ice, I'm pretty sure we'll we'll discuss this at a later date. But uh, because this is part of the world, and well, at least part of this world. So yeah, that's that's something we need to discuss a little bit later. It's end of the world. Yeah, I'd rather worry about the end of the world a little bit later. Let's get out of here first.
All right. So we learned about Ice Nine. <laughs> I th I don't think Iceland is actually. I think that's Greenland you're thinking about. I don't know though. I could be wrong. It's one of the two. I know they're mixed up. Greenland's the cold one, oddly enough. Oh. Okay, well, let's get back to the, uh, whole thing, aside from Ice Nine. Okay, back to what we were doing beforehand. Let's take a look at our items. And now we begin the long, tedious process of combining things. Let's crush the dry ice with the chicken leg. Sounds about as rational as I thought it would. Uh, put the dry ice in the water bottle. Done. And then tie the rope to the water bottle. And there we go. Perfect. No, we don't need that. Don't worry, we'll be cooking a little bit later. Hmm. Okay, great. Let's get to that then, shall we? Oh, there's some dry ice left. Mm, left over. Wow. That was bad. Oh, good. Bo the pool ball. Jesus Christ, that's huge. Uh, well, would... Yeah, uh, I, well, maybe if we move the freezer thing, you know, in the back, I don't. Oh, okay, to the cellar. All right. <sighs> well, now we're going to activate a bomb. This is great. What a wonderful decision this was. You're counting the wrong way. Oh, well, look at that, okay. Shut up, Santa, I'm hilarious. Even when we're about to die, I am hilarious. To the end of days, I will be funny as shit. All right, let's go. Fine, Jesus. Three, two, one, chuck it and duck. And did it work? Oh, it looks like it worked. Good, all right. Let's see if it opens, shall we? Ah, we made it out and everything's okay. We didn't all freeze at once. Ugh, Santa, good lord. What are you doing? Yeah, it's hot, goddammit. What's wrong with you? Ah, okay. Yeah, well, that's a good question. Lotus, where the hell did you go? Wonderful. Oh, okay. Well, thanks, Lotus, for being so polite. Oh, really? You were worried? Oh, yeah, look at that smile on your face. Totally worried. Yeah, you'd be in trouble too. Bullshit.
I guess she's kind of right. If we if she did let us die, she'd be dead too because there's not much point to it. Well, actually, no. We already deactivated the dead. We don't really have to. I'm not sure. <laughs> Uh, you, uh, well, maybe the cops would answer. They'd be like, where are you? The Titanic. Oh, well. We'll just get right on that. Please, uh, just wait there. While we come in and arrest you for the false report. Ah! Oh, Jesus. Now you're just gonna make her angry. Closed on its own, okay. Well, you know, she's... I don't know, her boobs could probably weigh quite a bit. If we threw her at the door, she, would she have opened it? You know, if she was actually in there. And not frozen in the first five seconds, because of how little clothing she's wearing. Yeah, lazy and negligence. It's pretty much what she seems to be, at least. Oh, of course, she twirled her hair in her between her fingertips. God damn it. Oh, his vengeance with the grill complete. <laughs> okay, Santa, you kind of grew in my books a little bit. Books. I don't even know what I'm saying. Wow. <laughs> okay, Santa, you've grown a bit more in my eyes, aside from all the bitching. You do plenty of bitching, too, you know. Anyways. Let's just look around and we'll complete the next part of the puzzle. We have a bunch... We have some meat that needs to be uh, dealt with. Look at that. Mmm, delicious. Mmm, pork. Okay, let's just take the paper out now. Oh, don't worry, June. Well, that worked out well. Never mind. Uh, I can't pull it out, apparently. Okay, well then. Let's just, uh, we happen to have a knife here. Perfect for that. Yes, you cut the pork. Congratulations. All right. And on the note, it clearly says C plus 10 plus F. Let's see here. Well, let's just look at it real quick. Some kind of code? I don't know. Uh, no, no, I don't. Corporate and finance? Uh, no! I thought it was clever and funny. Oh, it's just, it's daggers, daggers to the heart. And wanting me, okay, so obviously it's hexadecimal for those who don't know. It's pretty obvious what that is. And from what I recall of hexadecimal, from what Lotus said earlier, A equaled 11, B equaled uh, 12, C equaled 13, so 13 plus 10 equals 23, and F plus, hmm, I think F was what? 14, 15, something like that? I don't know. Let's take a look, see. Uh, 12 plus six, wait, is that actually? Hmm, it's 10, right? Okay, well then, Twi uh, but also 10, wait, no, no, no. Hexadecimal, hexadecimal, that's right. 10 is 16, guys, that's right, that's right, that's right. So it's actually, 13 plus 16, so that's actually 29, and then F is 15, I believe. So with that, it would be 43. And that's where we come in down here, I believe. Yes, that's the safe. 
Hey, look, a number. Ah, gee, let's get to work, shall we? So, C plus 10 plus F. God damn it. Hmm. Yes, I know. Thank you. We don't have to we don't have to listen to the explanation every time. Thanks though. So obviously we know the code is 43 based on the hexadomestic uh, domestic decimal code that we got earlier, and look at that, it's open. We're really good at this. Let's just take back and oh no, the password is Yes, I did want to pick that. Yeah, we got it. Good, good for us. All right, let's take a look. See here, what do we got here? A Saturn security card. Security card, key card. It's like Metal Gear Solid all over again. Only this one doesn't have to be heated up or cold. Based on where we are. Anyways. Ah, oh, well, yes, there was. Why don't we try it out? Okay, well, we just so happen to have a card reader in the back over here, so let's toss that over here, huh? And look at that, it worked. Okay, let's leave, shall we? <laughs> wow, that was a really creaky door. Christ, that was like haunted <laughs> Haunted Mansion, you know, spooky 12-year-old horror kind of shit there. Anyways, now we are stepping out into another hallway that looks kind of familiar. Remember that? We got past the grating. But for now, though, I'm gonna end the episode. So we're going to save? Yes, I would like to overwrite the save file. We are past- we are on B deck in the hallway. No, I would not like to quit, but I would like to give you guys another trivia question. And this trivia question is called Fictional Realities. And this one is, the story of Ice Nine is actually orig- Ah, let's try that again. <laughs> the story of Ice Nine actually originates from a science fiction author. Do you know the science fiction author's name and the book in which Ice Nine is in? If you can put that down in the comments, that'd be great because we will be discussing that at length next episode. Probably, well, next puzzle episode. For now though, guys, I will see you all later. Thanks for watching. My name is Sages, and I love you so much. Okay, that was creepy. <laughs>